usually aren't going to come up with this stuff by themselves. She's repeating what this senior CIA agent says to her to repeat to me. That's how that's how it's going down. He's at he's sitting at um, CIA headquarters, McLean, Virginia. Um, I want to talk about another another uh, incident I failed to mention, and this was uh, the Manchester incident, which was real, really happened. Oddly enough, two days, two or three days before the bombing occurred in Manchester, <laughs> I had a YouTube channel. It's still up there, and I favorited two, favorited, 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 right, um, two videos by Ariana Grande, the only time I ever had, really, okay, and, uh, two or three days later, guess what happened, Manchester bombing incident, that was, um, intentionally, that was done by the CIA with cooperation by, uh, British intelligence, perhaps MI5 right um they planned and executed it um ariana grande herself knew that it was going to happen and she ariana grande herself is heavily is under heavy mind control using this using the same means all right um she uh she, like many other celebrities, know what would happen if she ever spoke out. They would kill her. Just like they, all the other celebrities they've been killing, who threatened to speak out. Who they think are going to, or did. They murder them. They've been murdering celebrities left and right since the late 2000s. At an, an alarming rate. And when you hear about heart attacks and stuff like that, or natural causes, guess who did it, man? Um, suicides as well. Okay. Um, so yeah, that was planned and executed by our very own CIA. Alright, um, there's another alarming incident. Before that, in 2013... I favorited this video. It was called, it's a song called Uh Oh, My Lumity. It takes place in this neighborhood of Harlem. Alright? A couple days after I favorited that video, guess what happened there? Really bad gas explosion in that same exact neighborhood around Harlem, in or around Harlem, that killed, that killed people. Alright? These two things that I'm naming, I don't believe they're coincidences. Okay? This is that big. It needs to be stopped. They're threatening to shoot me. They're saying these guys want to shoot me now. That's what she's saying to me. She's talking about the CIA. Alright. Um, I'm just tired of listening to this shit all day. Voice the skull all day, every day. Since 2014. On a daily basis. Well, 2015 is when they actually started using voice to skull. Before that... It was something everybody could hear. Uh, they would they would project it into the walls in my house or outside to get me to think people that lived nearby were coming into my yard. They took their voices. This um, they use it. They take they've used the voices of virtually everyone I know, even my own voice. Okay, and they do this without people's permission. They they've used Obama's voice. All right, they've used they used Trump's voice. They did that today. They use um. They've used uh, celeb voices of celebrities like Game, Nicki Minaj, um, Tom Hanks, dude. Um, Freaking. Who else? Ariana Grande, man. Um, Freaking. I can't even remember all the people they've used. Bernie Sanders. Bill Clinton. So they're using presidents' voice, presidents' voices, um, and they do this because they are working with the NSA closely with the NSA, and the NSA 
um, had this project, it may still be ongoing, called uh, Project Mystic. And through Mystic, they, um, they took uh, recorded phone calls from millions and millions of Americans. I wouldn't be surprised if they had just about every U.S. citizen their phone calls recorded. If they have their own phone line, they have their voice. And that's how they do it. They, they take the, uh, they make filters, voice filters, vocal filters, using, um, using the, uh, these, these, uh, recordings. And they, um, they create it using a filter and they use a pr computer program because there's, there's also programmers, um, uh, maybe three or four, uh, working with army intelligence with this woman, this female officer working, um, you know, to do that kind of stuff. So they, they make filters out of the voices. I didn't know anything about this when it first started. I had no idea what the fuck was going on. And this is actually common with Voice to Skull. So it, that's potentially dangerous. I've, I've let people know that they've been using their voices, some people. And for, for the most part, originally at least, it was done without their knowledge or consent. They don't ask their permission to do it. They just take those voices and use them. All right, and it's potentially dangerous if they use it on somebody who doesn't know what's going on because I didn't know exactly what was going on until earlier this year. And if somebody were to think, the things that they ha that they this this woman says using their voice filters, and there used to be more than just her, as a as a as a voice to skull operator, um, the things they have them say are threatening and obscene. Okay. And uh, if they were to lead somebody to believe that that was the actual person that was doing it, the owner of the voice, that could be potentially very bad for the individual whose, whose voice they're using, you know, um, if, if they were led to believe that it was actually them, which many are, many targeted individuals who are, who have this, who are subject to this, uh, actually believe that I did for a long time actually believe those individuals are present or that they're con doing it somehow themselves okay um, so that's really bad really bad they can also they even made creative voices from a mix of two different individuals they can morph them right that happens too so they're using my voice without my consent as well and I don't know who else they're using it on if they if they're targeting somebody else that knows me uh, who doesn't know about it that would be pretty bad potentially for me all right um, so yeah this is a huge program guys this is I'm one of the I already know I'm one of the biggest targets on the face of the earth for gang stalking and electronic warfare my family okay they have used voices of my family as well in this um they uh even deceased family members deceased um deceased celebrities like bruce lee um yeah they're really harassing me right now they tend to calm it down when i'm on the camera and uh because they don't want me to mention it going on really but also back when they were using um you know fully audible voices by projecting them into the walls or in the air or outside uh they would immediately quiet down or become altogether silent whenever i would turn this this camera on and record or whenever there was company over they would immediately become very quiet because anybody could hear it now usually not but they usually do quiet down when i'm talking to someone else because most off most of the time they are uh, this woman is telling them what to say to me, how to respond, how to act, and they use it. They don't. They don't really ask, man. They threaten. They threaten if they don't cooperate. That's how they do it. Okay, this is huge. Like I was saying, when I go to an area, there's a huge buffer zone around me, at least a mile, in every direction around me, a mile in radius, uh, from me, to the end of the buffer zone. If they know I'm headed to a certain area, a certain neighborhood, 
um, if I'm if I'm on my way there, they will use voice to skull in mass on dozens or even hundreds of people, hundreds of people if they have to. Uh, they will use the AI to do it. If they're not clear to be there, they will hear it. They will hear it uh, with voice to skull, and it will be something along the lines of, "This is the U.S. military. Um, you are uh, you are." Um, you're ordered to leave the area, uh, this neighborhood or this er this certain area, um, in the name of national security as part of some anti-terrorism stuff, which is ridiculous, and we will use force if necessary. And if they don't comply, people have died because they haven't they haven't um they haven't uh, listened. Dozens of people actually have been taken out because they didn't listen. If they ask why they don't cooperate, they will light them up with directed energy. They won't say what, how they're doing it. They don't. Uh, most people listen. Most people in Seattle know. They know about my situation. And there's anybody who gets through this buffer zone, who, who enters it, has to be one of them. They have to be cleared to come that close to me. If they're not one of them, or if they don't know them, they it's automated okay they um and a lot of the planes the aircraft that, that continuously pass overhead which there are a lot of dozens each day dozens maybe up to a hundred a day pass over my head and mostly there's these big airliners that are piloted by uh they're piloted by the the air force air force pilots and they come from maybe SeaTac. Or uh, Boeing Field and they just circle they spend the day circling the area sometimes they fly right over my head at nighttime they I can see they have a spotlight fixed to the bottom of these uh, they're commercial jets most of them some of them have logos on them. Uh, some of them are used for cargo primarily or passenger jets all right but they're modified they have a uh, spotlight like fixed to the bottom they can swivel around and oftentimes they'll fly nearby like right over the house and light me up with a spotlight I'll just all of a sudden see this big bright light on me and then as the plane passes it'll just dim out completely or I won't see it anymore you know um, so that happens a lot um, and those are used those have those are fixed with um, surveillance equipment uh, they they use that usually to keep track of who comes and goes. Not only do they have satellite, they're not only are they watching me with defense satellites, which is domestic spying, you know, they have thermal to watch me inside the house, which they're doing now. And they have thermal are um, also with, uh, with the targeting drones, with the surveillance drones, they also have cameras on them. Not only do they need those, they also need aircraft as well, constantly circling the area controlling who comes and goes, who's getting close and who isn't. Okay, there's tons of surveillance on me and it's so out in the open. Tons of people know who I am, man, but maybe not enough because this has to stop. This is domestic. This is a domestic torture program, all right? Um So Yeah, I'm just heated up by they use microwaves to heat me too they hit the top of my head sometimes just my nose I don't know what that's for the interior the inside of my lungs is lit up with microwaves the inside of my lungs sometimes to uh, target my breathing they won't let me do anything throughout the day everything I do is messed with like I said um, they won't let me work do chores to help my mom they hit me with tons of directed energy when I do that when I try to work out they do they try to they just work to ruin everything I'm trying to do throughout the day and keep me super depressed all the time um, but yeah um, I'm pretty sick of this shit actually um, just just uh, earlier I'll show you the vehicle oh it's gone now Whoa, what the hell? Dude, that was perfectly synchronized. What the fuck?
Yeah. Wow. Okay, that 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 spot across the street, that FedEx truck just pulled up uh, on this side of the street. As I, <laughs> exactly as I opened the window. I think the, um, I think that, uh, that thought may have been, inclination to do that may have been, um, induced by them. It just, just shows how much, uh, to what degree of control, you know, it just shows, to, goes to show you what they can do, basically. Um, but there was a, a blue SUV parked out there earlier, and um, I came outside and uh, looked out there because there's somebody standing out there. I didn't recognize the, you know, the vehicle or the person, and uh, it's, it's this thug, thug-looking uh, white dude with a blue jacket and a and a cap, standing next to the blue Explorer. And I walk out there, and he's like talking to himself and stuff, saying a bunch of directed conversation. And at one point, um. I come out and walk up and he throws up a C like that and uh and you know trying to get me to believe he's cuz but I seriously doubt it you know um what's he doing over here anyway if he is um but uh yeah so he he's he's like banging on me and um freaking he says some eventually something about a funeral funeral on is what he says and the voice of skull uh until officer just said funeral for my mom okay um a lot of people i noticed a lot of these stalkers were all black like they're going to a funeral they've been doing that lately since the beginning of this year maybe around spring or beginning of the summer some of them have a black like black suit on like really dark like they're going to a funeral or a black dress even so they're definitely trying to getting pretty morbid with this stuff um they threaten my mom daily threaten me um yeah it's really bad really bad um so so yeah and then um this white van pulls up and i, I look over and um there's this guy inside uh and he's flipping his head around 